Good afternoon. I'm Brigadier General J.B. Val, the Deputy Commanding General for Operations at the 25th Infantry Division. And today I'd like to take a few moments to talk to you about better training management. This is part of a series of better training and leader development to assist company battery troop commanders and battalion and squadron commanders and how to get the most readiness and training value out of training meetings and training management and leadership in their organizations. References I'll use FM 7.0 from October 2016, in particular today chapter 3 when we talk about the 10-step training model, and appendix Charlie, which is company training meetings. So let's talk about that. Starting off with chapter 3, the Army talks about an 8-step training model, starting with planning training all the way through retraining. Let's talk about something a little bit more at the graduate level. For step one, planning training, you probably have to have a good idea of where you're going. You want to have the assessment of previous training, where your mission essential tasks are and your proficiency at those tasks, your collective task at the platoon level, in this case, leader tasks and their proficiency. So before you can plan, intuitively, you have to know where you're going. You have to know where you've been and where you are. So, 10-step model would add, assess your unit's training at those individual leader collective tasks. If you've done through, gone through a platoon or a company training event before, you'll have those abilities to pull that data and that information. Start there. Where do you need to go, but where are you currently? So that's why we talk about a 10-step model. Going into planning training, the second step. 7.0 at Chapter 3 talks about making sure you identify specific training objectives for your training plans. So, for example, if you have a training evaluation outline for conduct troop leading procedures, that's fantastic. We want to make sure we can, you know, plan, prepare, execute, and conduct training and cover the troop leading procedures for an exercise or an event. But what specifically do you want as an outcome from those troop leading procedures? Is it issuing a plan? Is it doing reconnaissance? What's the specific leader outcomes that you want as well? So it's one thing to say, I'm performing a collective task or mission essential task, but go into the training evaluation outlines, those TNEOs, go into those training objectives and be very specific about what you want to focus your, your training effort on. That's the detail and science of planning. The other part of planning is identifying the resources and support you're gonna need early on. We're talking about ammunition requirements. We're talking about training aids, devices, and simulations. We're talking about targetry, if you're talking about going to the field and conducting a live fire, for example. You need to identify those requirements that support your training plan early. In the TAMIS-R system for the U.S. Army, several months are required to make sure you have the right ammunition in accounts to be able to use that and draw from that uh, for your training plan. So that's more than just two weeks out. We have to think through time and space making sure we have those resources available. Make contact with the range division and folks early on, whether it's task C for materials, whether it's the range division itself for targetry, and make sure they have an understanding of what you're going to need to conduct uh, high quality training. So as we start our planning process, one of the first things we want to consider, step three in the training model, is to train and certify leaders. Now I personally think this is the most important and decisive step in the process. It's one that's often overlooked, and it's very easy to overlook when we rely upon Sergeant Val or we rely upon Lieutenant Val to always do this range, to always do this training event. And so he or she may know from subject matter expertise how to do this. But sometimes we need to incorporate new TTPs. We need to make sure that that leader is ready to execute the training. We also need to consider um, any opposing force that might be needed as part of the training process and evaluators that may be used as well. OCs or OCTs that might be used. So what are the specific training certifying steps that we're talking about here? We're talking about making sure that they, that leader has the resources. They know what the mission essential task is. They know the task steps and performance measures. And they've done the, the pre-work and certifications to be able to do this level. Platoon leaders, having gone through platoon training, STX and live fire events, to graduate into company level training as a component of a company live fire in this example. For table gunneries, a lot of those mounted uh, and platform centric organizations, armor, mechanized infantry, cavalry, aviation, artillery, the tables are pretty prescriptive that way. But you still need to make sure 
that the master gunners in those organizations work the training leader certification for that training event and make sure everybody knows what they have to do for that training. Next, we want to recon the training site and the materials. Make sure we know where we're going and it's available. Classroom space in most installations is a, is a challenge. Range operation space is a challenge. We've got to make sure those training sites, facilities, materials are identified and alternative plans if your primary training site is not available to you. And again, make sure you cross with those people who support your training, either in a classroom environment or in a range outside uh, environment, whether it's live, virtual, or constructive. Next, we want to issue the plan. Now, the real issue is an operations order should be given versus an MOI. Why? Because an operations order for your training is going to give you clear task and purpose with a commander's intent with training outcomes. Memorandums of instruction are typically more administrative in nature. So a better technique is to issue operations orders for your organization. You're going to cross everything you need in a five paragraph operations order and you'll reinforce tactical knowledge and understanding in your organization through the op order development process. Next, we want to rehearse the training plan. So some specific things we're talking about here. Tactical exercise without troops, lane walking on ranges, conducting map exercises, and making sure our instructors uh, are able to rehearse their material that they're going to present if they're in a classroom environment or if they're in a range environment. We've gone through the murder board, if you will. We've gone through somebody has checked that that person, that leader, that unit is ready to conduct that training from that perspective. We've rehearsed what we're going to do, performance oriented. After we rehearse, we're going to execute that training. We're going to make it day, night, whatever conditions we have planned for executing the various conditions of our training that we need or are required. Uh, performance oriented. We're going to physically do it, whether it's live, virtual, or constructive, because the behavior is only going to change as human beings actually do some action. And as far as executing training, go back and look at the principles of training. We talk about multi-echelon uh, and incorporating several other activities into that training. That'll make it a better training event. As we execute the training, we, we're complete. Obviously, we're going to go to the after action review. Now, some things to consider with the after action review. What is your collection plan? How have you trained those evaluators to use the training evaluation outlines from the combined arms training strategy for those collective events or mission essential tasks? How are they grading? How are they observing? How are they trained to collect that information and bring it back together and decide as a senior trainer what things we're going to cover in an AR. That's a very important step most units miss. Most units will go out there and, hey, let's just cover that training. We've got a sergeant who can watch it. Rehearse how you collect that. And rehearse how you set your AR if you have a better training uh, event as a result. After we conduct that after action review and we record for posterity those things we've evaluated, we're going to move on to the last step of the eight-step model, retrain. Now, we'll talk about recovery and transition, what I call the ninth and ten steps. But in Chapter 3 of FM 7.0, we talk about retrain to standard. So go back a couple steps when you execute your training and build into the plan opportunities to retrain to standard. Going from a blank fire to live fire is a decision. If a unit needs another iteration under blank conditions or another day condition before going to night, as an example, make sure you build the time in. Often units don't do that. They don't build into the training schedule a time to retrain to standard. Now let's talk about recovering from our training event. We want to recover after that AAR, after the training is all complete, all iterations, all units. Recover our soldiers' equipment and build that into the schedule. I see that as a, as a challenge for units most times where they don't put that into the training timeline. Either retraining or recover periods. That is key. So obviously as we execute training, we're going to build retraining periods into this, but as we jump to the end here, we're recovering our soldiers and equipment, we got to get ready to transition to the next training event. If we don't recover that right, we might have an operational readiness rate problem. We might have tired soldiers. We might not have materials that are ready for this next event. Which brings me to this last point on the 10-step model. The transition is often overlooked. And if you think about where we are in this model from assessing all the way through training to transition to the next event, think of this not as a linear model as I've drawn it, but it is a circular process. There are times in the calendar where you may have to train and certify leaders that you're developing the next plan in your training uh, down the road. So let me give you an example of how this should work in a company training meeting. Everything I've driven, uh, drawn up here in red talks about the direction of your training meeting that supports the 10-step model. Like most things in the Army, you want to start with the end state in mind and through a backward planning process, work your way back. 
In this example, a company battery troop training meeting, we're out at T plus 14 weeks where we've got the idea of what we want to do. We have the concept of this plan to be executed this week. So we are looking at the execution, AR, retraining, recover, and transition period out here. But to set all of that up, we need to go back and to figure out when and where we want to do our rehearsals. And here, maybe it's the 10th week out, T plus 10. Let's keep going back. So if I'm going to rehearse then, when do I need to issue that plan, that operations order? Maybe it's T plus 8. Okay, if I'm going to issue an operations order, when do I do my recon and train and certify leaders? Obviously beforehand to set that plan in place. So you can see how backward planning allows you to account for each of these steps through that backward planning process. I submit to the audience, if you work in a chronological fashion, you will likely miss key steps about when do I train my trainers and certify my leaders. You won't cover it here, and then by the time you get here to the execute my training plan at T12 in a training meeting, I've seen it, you're gonna go back and you're gonna say, I need to go back to T4 and let's go back and talk about this, and you've wasted some time. So if you think about how to apply this in time and space in a training meeting, I guarantee you, you'll have a much more impactful training event. You'll get the best readiness possible for your company battery troop or battalion level, squadron level training event that's possible. That's the lesson for today. Hope you've learned a couple of key TTPs to take away to empower your units and to flesh out a little bit more of what the eight step, now 10 step training model can give your organization. We'll look forward to the next uh, video spot. We'll talk about a better way to do live fires for your organization. Thanks.